Hey everybody, we're back with another video. Today we're gonna to be looking a little bit at automation. I wanna specifically focus on the difference between drawing in your automation and recording your automation in real time. So there are really two different ways of doing this all together. I'm gonna to push A on my keyboard and go into automation view. And you can see on my Airhu part here, I've got some automation on this section, but not on the first section. And we wanna actually add some in to these other sections just a little bit. And the reason for that is because this part, this is a stringed instrument from China, and it has a really unique sound. But if you just let it play full volume, it's gonna stick out in certain spots. And to see the truth. So here it is again. That's when I began to understand When I left the boy behind and became a man So let's skip ahead to this part that has some automation. You could hear all the notes just kind of stay stagnant. It's not as much like a real performance. Ever let it go Don't know what you Stop inside my head You promised me a life I'd never know Do you hear how it blends in more here? It's still there. You can still hear that counterpoint. It's like a counter melody. But it's not there and present every single second. So what we want to do is look at two different ways of doing this. I'm going to expand this out using my command arrows to zoom in a little bit. And we can look at this second one. You can see it's pretty straight lines. This is definitely something that was drawn in by me at a previous time. Now, I'm not 100% sure why I didn't take it all the way to the end or do the whole thing, but we're just going to really quickly do that. So I'm setting some endpoints here because if you don't, you can actually drag down too much at any given time. We don't want to do that. So we're going to have this build up in a little bit and then we're going to have it get back out a little bit. So what I'm doing is having this build in based on how it looks. That's really all I can do. I can listen and change, listen and change, listen and change. So that's okay way to do this, um, but it doesn't necessarily make it the best option all the time. But certainly I'm going to be able to eventually get the end results I want. And because I know the part, there are certainly some benefit to this. And we can have this actually maybe get a little bit louder through that line as it goes down. Crank it down quite a bit right here. Have it build just for a second right there and then have it go out. So let's listen. And to see the truth. And then you saw me start to edit that as we were going. So this is one way of doing it. It's already blending a lot better. Now, so far you've seen me add points. So I just click on the line and we can move those points around. However, there are other tools that we can use for this. So for instance, the pencil tool allows me to draw in a continuous line. And that would work in here as well. And there's also another really important set of tools, which is the automation select tool. We're not going to talk about that today. You use that for things like moving, copying, pasting. But I do want to just briefly look at the, the curve tool, because if you have two points here, we can actually move those points around. So let's see, let's click here. And I can add a little bit of curve to this. So it's, it makes it non-linear. 
do an S curve, just a fade in or fade out. And we can do that with any of our data points in between two points. And so that becomes another way as we're fine tuning our performance to add a little bit more a different sound to it, something that may sound more natural, something that may sound less natural. It doesn't matter exactly except that you need to know it's there so you can actually use it if you want to. So instead of just having a straight line between two points, you can actually curve it or do whatever you want with it. So that's a really useful thing as well. Let's come now to our second section. And we're going to do this one using one of our apps to help with that. So I'm going to be on my iPhone doing a little bit of automation here. And what we want to do really quickly is go through and look at some of these options. So over here in our header, we have our automation mode. We have read, which means it's just going to read the data that's there and follow it. We have touch mode. This means that anytime we're touching a parameter, or adjusting it, that it will write automation. And when we let go or release that, it will go back to just reading what's there. So for instance, really quickly here, I'm gonna push play. We begin to lose our and so you can see it was moving there for a second. I released it, it snapped back. So it just records while you're engaged with actually touching it. Latch means that it's going to read. Promise me a life I never know. And then once you touch it, it goes into write mode and it will erase the other data that's there. So it reads whatever's there until you engage something and then it switches into write mode. And that's this mode right here. This actually gives you a warning and it can erase everything that's under in write mode. So I, I don't actually use write mode for anything unless it's the very first pass of automation. Then we have trim, which allows us to move this up and down, but it's the entire amount. And then we have a relative. So this one is going to do a similar thing, but it's going to be a relative motion. So for instance, So with relative, it's going to leave all of the other data there. It's just going to add or subtract from that data. So it's a relative change, but it keeps all the rest. The trim then, as I said, boosts or cuts. In your life, I'd never know. And it does that to the data that's there. And I do want to add that when we talk about trim and relative, that those are in conjunction with our other modes. So it's just to changing how those ones work. But we can also turn them off. So you can see we have relative on and off with touch and then trim on and off with touch. When we come in here, so what is the benefit then to using a controller real time as opposed to drawing it in? Well, there's a certain amount of efficiency that comes with this. So it means I can get a pass done and if I'm skilled or practiced enough with this, I might get really good results. They're going to be a lot quicker than going in and drawing every single thing. Um, it also could be a little bit more natural because you're listening to the music. Hopefully you're not having to stare at where your finger is, but you're listening and reacting in real time. So let's just do a pass at touch now in real time. That's when I began to understand When I left the boy behind and became a man Tears you cried, they were for you I thought I saw what you clearly knew Yeah. 
that's when we begin to lose our And then that last one, I actually lost the visuals of it and just kept on going. I didn't even need to see it. All I needed to do was listen. And you can see there's a lot more data points here because when I draw it in, I'm just adding one and moving it. This has a lot more data points, which actually takes up more processing. However, it's usually not the deal breaker in terms of our overall system's performance. But just be aware that it does take up more of that. If you had a, a thousand tracks and they all had complex automation, sure, it's going to be different than if they had no automation. Okay, so now we can go through and fine tune this because we did it in touch mode. If there's something I want to change, then I could go through. For you, I thought I saw what you clearly knew. And just make changes in sections or do the whole thing brand new. But this is going to give us a performance with this instrument, which is much more natural in the scope of how it sounds in our mix. When we're done, let's switch this back to read mode. Take it out of automation mode. And it's still all there. It's still working. And our mix hopefully is a lot better because of it. Okay. That's all I really wanted to look at today. Is there a clear winner with which one is better? Well, not really. Sometimes I'm going to draw it in. Sometimes I'm going to record it in. Uh, both ways you can get the end results you want. But there are times when you're going to want to be efficient and get it done really quickly. And there's going to be times where you want to really, under a microscope, get it exactly how you want it. So just use both of them in different situations and, you know, use whichever one makes the most sense. Let me know in the comments below which is your preferred way, which way do you like the best, uh, and it's just a good conversation starter. Okay, more videos coming later in the week. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you later.